solitary poem. This poem is composed by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth was a very famous poet, romantic poet, poet of nature. Uh, he was born uh, on 7th April 1770 in Cocoa Mouth in the uh, in UK. This is Cocoa Mouth. You, you see the picture. It's situated in England. Uh, William Wordsworth is regarded as the worship of nature, love of nature, uh, is a major theme of his poetry. He wrote about ordinary men and women in the language of ordinary people. For him, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings arising from emotions recollected tranquility. He died at a ritual mount and gardens, you see. Little Mountain and Gardens in England, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, he was uh, died uh, April 23rd, 1850. Uh, when William Watson was in, on tour to Scotland in 1803, he heard the solitary for song and stopped to listen. Reciting this poem, you don't open your book, only you enter and listen. Behold a single in the field, young solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gentle pass. Alone she courts and avoids the crane, and seeing some melancholy strain, oh listen for the veil profound, is overflowing with the sound. No night angle did ever sound, more will come notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady hunt, Amongst Arabian sands, a voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest harvests. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the flanctive numbers flow for old unhappy far of things and the battles long ago. Oh, yes, it so more humble lay. Familiar matter to of today, some natural sorrow, loss of pain that has been and may be vain. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending, I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore. Long after it was hard no more. Then look at the glossary and notes. Behold, instead to look at her or, or somebody or something. Young, over there, means all use, solitary. Solitary means single or alone. You see, alone. The call is cutting, the Scottish girl is cutting the crops. Highland alas means Scottish girl, a girl who lives in the highland. You see the Scottish girl as she lives in the highland of Scotland. You see the, in the picture. Now, melancholy strain, sad strong, bale, valley. Uh, you see the valley uh, and profound, deep. Here, deep valley. Uh, valley profound means deep valley. Chant uh, means uh, chant means sing, weary. Very tired after working hard, very tired travelers uh, in the Arabian uh, sands, Arabian desert. Band group of people haunt a uh, place visited frequently, shady haunt. You see oasis yeah, in the Arabian desert, you see oasis. Uh, Arabian sands, the desert of Arabian in the Middle East, Arabian desert. Farthest harvests, the most remote group of islands you see in the uh, Scotland, group of islands in Scotland, farthest harvests. Here, flanctive number, sad music, uh, mournful verse, harmonically, ordinary song, sickle, you see sickle, sickle, you see the picture, there is the picture of a sickle, a tool of a cutting grass, motionless with that movement. Scotland, you see, Scotland, the map of Scotland. It is in the United Kingdom, you see.
the solitary repo is the first stanza beholder single in the field yawn solitary highland lass so ripping and the singing herself stop here all sentry force alone she calls and binds the crane and sings some melancholy strain oh listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound now tell me which word uh, is uh, similar to the word single uh, yes uh, or solitary who is uh, single in the field uh, yes uh, the scottish girl the highland lass means a scottish girl what is call twing the call was riffing and cutting the corpse and finds the crane alone what does the uh, phrase or the line uh, is overflowing the sound what do mean overflowing the sound uh, yes uh, the girl's tone or uh, the music of a song that spreads over deep valley a uh, well profound means a deep valley okay what is the theme of the first stanza uh, the theme of the first stanza uh, is uh, the scottish girl the, uh, alone is uh, uh, cutting uh, riffing the crops uh, and uh, singing uh, a melancholy strain uh, means uh, the sad songs Uh, she is singing a uh, sad song. Uh, that song uh, overflows uh, uh, the deep valley of uh, the Veil Pufa. Then come to second stanza. No night angles are deed ever thought. More will come north to weary bands of travelers in some sadly haunt among sun and sands. Uh, A voice so thrilling ever was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest harvests. Now you did it uh, silently. Uh, tell me, uh, yes sir, tell me that uh, here the solitary poet song reminds the poet of other singers who are D in the second stanza. Yes, uh, song the tone of the night angle and uh, uh, the cuckoo bird. Tell me, uh, who sings uh, the welcome notes uh, to events? Uh, yes, night angle. For whom? For the travelers, those who are taking rest uh, in the shady hunt. What do you mean by shady hunt? Shady hunt means so oasis in the urban sands. We are told the night angle sings, the night angle sings uh, uh, in the urban desert, in the shady hunt uh, uh, for the way events, for the, the travelers. So tell me, uh, whose voice is uh, thrilling, means exciting? Yes, the, the voice or the tone of the cuckoo bird. Where does cuckoo bird sing? Among the farthest harvests. And say, in the uh, group of islands in the uh, north west of Scotland. Now tell me, Uh, when does uh, the cuckoo bird sing? Yes, in springtime, the cuckoo bird sings. What effect uh, does it have? Uh, it breaks the silence of the uh, sea. Her song is breaking the silence of the seas. Now, uh, come to uh, third stanza. 
Will no one tell me what he sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago? Or is it some more humble family matter of today, some natural sorrow, loss of fame that has been and may be okay? Now read it as silently. Okay. Then what does the plaintive numbers mean here? Plaintive numbers. It's a sad music, a sad song, a call, Scottish call. Tell me, uh, what are the probable themes of the girl song? Uh, yes, the poet uh, uh, thinks uh, uh, or uh, predicts uh, that a uh, 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 song may be or tell the story of some far of happenings or natural sorrow or loss or pain or the sorrowful events happen, the battle. Now, come to the last stanza. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing, singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bow long after it was heard no more. Now read uh, the fourth stanza, I means the last stanza of this poem silently and go through the glossary words. My dear students, uh, tell me, why does the poet say as if her song could have no ending? Why does uh, he say so? Yes. The song contains an everlasting effect on the mind of the poet, William Wordsworth. Tell me, why does the poet uh, say, listens motionless and still? Why? Yes. The rich uh, and the melodious voice of the singer hold the poet mesmerized and spellbound. Mesmerized means attend, attend to be completely. Then tell me, uh, um, what is the reaction of the poet uh, at the end? Uh, yes, uh, though the poet uh, cannot understand the language of the girl song, but the music, melodious music, touches the heart of the poet. He carried the music with him as he mounted uh, up the hill. About, uh, the beautiful poem of William Oshoth, The Solitary Reefer. Thank you.